in the round of four. So far we're already set up into a Hurricane Charm uh, round of four match. That's on the top side of the bracket. And now we enter the lower side of the bracket. So Panda Bear Me Showtime, DNS True, our last two best fighters of the day. So do you have to the bottom right hand side our Red Cross player give it up for Armour Team's Showtime. To the other left, our green Zerg player from OSC Root, it's Panda Bear Me. Panda Bear Me has been getting better and better as of late. Uh, this playing starting to really pat out uh, a lot more results, you know, but he's still sort of just... I mean, I mean, he's getting better, but then you sort of talk about his opponent Showtime. A WCS champion last year, he went to BlizzCon as one of the top eight foreigners of the year. You know, he went to Ian Katowice this year already, which he qualified into, one of the few foreigners to qualify directly into the group stage, rather than having to go through the open bracket. I mean, this guy has been on top of the Protoss and European scene for a long time, and that's where, looking at this, I feel Panda Bear Me might just struggle a little bit, because Showtime's just so good, right? So, and then this will be interesting to see how it goes, as we've seen the uh, Paladin building up behind the mineral line to get us started. Already a Nexus coming down the low ground, a gate, a Nexus, a cyber build. Just to again establish a pretty, I mean, it's a pretty standard setup here so far. Nothing too crazy. You see a couple of queens on the way out from Panda Mami to the upper left hand side. So a couple of queens on the way at the moment. And just a couple of drones getting to mining now as they go towards those mineral lines. A couple of zergs popping out too. There's another drone from Panda Bear Me. We'll uh, move on over towards the upper right hand side here and we'll just be able to uh, look to pop down and have Shoshang and try and come in. I mean, he won't be there to block it, and even if he does, the Lurgans are here as well, but he does see the third base coming down, which is already good information for him as his opening. It's going to be Twilight Council base, so moving away from Stargate openers, as we've seen multiple of the Protoss players so far today going for. And now going in towards the Twilight Council opening right from the get-go, so Showtime setting up in towards this as this probe does manage to move it all the way back towards the bottom side of the map now as well. Skip now live, picked up some good info with it. And now he has G has an adept across the map to try and keep up picking, uh, picking up further information. Especially if he was trying to see the saturation, trying to figure out if there's a whole bunch of lings hiding ready to run across the map with speed or something. Panda Bear me just looking to see whatever he can so far as well, showtime. As the dead is indeed coming down to the south side, a couple of zerglings here from Panda Bear me as well. And just keep on running through and adepts here able to take those zerglings down pretty quickly, so. Lings get taken down, the burrow upgrade comes on through here from Panda Bear Me, so he's going to go into a very interesting opening, like a burrow so quickly. I wonder if he's aiming towards just blocking the third base with a Zergling or something. I mean, what else could he be looking for with the burrow? I guess it'll help to keep some drones safe, maybe because the resonating blade for death push, but it's like quite a quite an investment just to save some uh, units here and some units there, so... Let's see, uh... How this go with the bin that's coming up here from Panda Bear Me as well, really getting ready to prepare against these incoming adepts. Behind this for Showtime though, just a robot facility on the way up and he just sets up into what will be a pretty, again like a pretty standard way of opening I suppose. These three gateways can be finishing walking into warp gates, so next to warp in of adepts, seven of them in total to start shaping across to the top side of the map. Actually just going to be six, he has one in the wall. Safety first here for Showtime, I mean Showtime always a very defensive player. Always a player who looks to kind of defend, 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 and then look to attack afterwards, much later into the game. So it makes no surprise here that, you know, he will leave one adept behind to make sure he's safe and fully walled, rather than shading that one extra adept across the map just to try and do a little bit more. Plenty of Ling Bane though from Panda Bear Me, however, of course, that's already Showtime being somewhat victorious, you know, by coming in here and forcing a lot of Ling Bane, he's already put himself in a good position as he's forcing units instead of drones, so this has gone quite well for Showtime up until now, and it still is going quite well, doesn't lose anything at all, picks up only one or two drones, a couple of Zerglings, but again, it's all about that work count, and you can see he's on 47 against 38 workers, just really establishing a lead, because he's been forcing so many units, just with the incoming pressure, and the possibility of pressure, and, you know, under them, because of that, building units to stay safe, and now just ending up a little bit behind. Percentage is down on the third base. We're going to see no immortal being made or anything just yet, so it doesn't look as though Showtime wants to follow up with a super fast kind of uh, a super fast aggressive kind of next stage of this, I suppose. There's two gateways and the forge will come down now in the main base. 
expecting to see a few more drones. Uh, Sony picked off actually the depths. Are actually back up here. The wolf is now allowing them to come across the map and to try and get some damage done. So Adept's picking up a few kills, a few drones going down. And then we see in the forge just over halfway done. The Nexus just over halfway done as well from Showtime. And you'll see the next immortal is still continuing to build. Still, I mean, nice and slow from Showtime, I think, is the kind of moral of the story so far. Just slow, but a little bit of action here and there, and again, just doing the small little things, which help push him into better positions as the game continues. Now he is going to make a push. No immortals in this, but just adept sentry. I mean, what's on the map here from Panda Bear Me? Well, he's got five bangers and the 33 lane. It's not going to be great against so many adepts, of course. We do see seven roaches starting to build. That'll be a bit better, because again, without the immortal, there's not really a lot of firepower in the army to kind of work his way through those armored units, so something that could help out here is, I mean, the problem is, he's just going to be this army pushing in here already, and so many force fields available to block sentries or block bailings away, and the sentry's going to stay alive for a long time as Wolf doesn't move further forwards, and he's going to get ready to warp in again, another nice force field just as the bailing starts to advance on in, and I mean, so far, the roaches don't seem to be in high enough in number anyway. One Bayman does connect towards the sentries, but it's not enough damage output overall. You really start picking any of these off, and Panda Bear Me, he's losing drones, he's losing units, and Showtime is just marching his way into a very quick lead in this series, it would seem. Pulling some of the sentries back, good micro on the war prism as well, just to keep those sentries alive, and that, in France, is pretty much a good game. It's because Showtime has killed so much, a crisp attack. Panda Bear Me may be overreacting. Jump in and see how it's gonna go. To so the bottom left hand side, down again in this best of five. It's our green Zerg player, give it up for OSC Roots Panda Bear Me. And to the bottom right from Armor Team, the Red Protoss is Showtime. Sup, Mjolki, how you doing, Lina? How's life treating you? What's going on? Have fun tonight. Thank you, Vel. My moi maisha. Go harte, meow. Oh, I know. Do you want to hear some really good Dutch, Matt? Are you ready? Ik denk dat u wel behoefte heeft aan een peper You don't even know what I'm saying. You don't even know what I'm saying. It means... I think you may require a peppermint. It's, a, it's, it's my favorite Dutch insult, because it isn't really an insult. Well, it is. It's like you've got bad breath. I think you may require a pepper. It's like a polite insult. Anyways. Vodka lemonade, that sounds tasty. Vodka lemonade is my drink, man. Like, vodka lemonade tastes so good. Like, I don't understand why everyone doesn't just drink vodka lemonade. It's so good. Do I remember vodka lemonade or double vodka lemonade? Yeah, I do, Mjolki. You don't, because I remember you passing out like seven times in a row. <laughs> this is a great story. I've got to tell you the time this Dutch girl came to Newcastle. Later tonight, it's, it's a great story. No, I didn't. <laughs> There's no sexual advancements made on either side, but we had a very uh, expensive and fun night. It's a good story. Prostitutes. She, she wasn't a prostitute. But only did you get some. No, we didn't get prostitutes. <laughs> she was too drunk for prostitutes, you know. Alright, we're gonna kick this off, guys. Uh, we're still, I mean, PVZ. Again, I'm not gonna lie, I really despise this matchup in the early game. It feels so slow and boring. So, like, even in TVZ, I don't know, like, with the Reaper moving across, and I'm like, even there's a death coming across, it doesn't feel like anything really happens, you know? I think I'm just very biased to this matchup from when back in Wings and Heart of the Swarm, we just never saw anything happen for like 9 10 minutes. And that's just ingrained in my mind, I'm just like, oh, ah, not again, TVZ, help me. And all the rest. And in depth shading forwards here, as we see the uh, third hatchery coming down. Oak says shot. We're gonna start pouring while we uh, cast so we can drink as soon as the game is over. And then jump into a break. Because I'm getting more efficient at this, guys. Oops. Now I'm spilling tequila. Well, that's not efficient, that's inefficient. Alright. <laughs> My kind of stream, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> this is exactly Mythic's kind of stream. I don't know if because I'm not allowed to get blackout drunk and like dead like you trying to do every single time you seem to drink. Well, at least at Home Story Club. <laughs> Mythic Home Story Club stories are great as well, guys. If you haven't heard the home, if you haven't seen the picture of Solo and me with Mythic in the background at Home Story, it's amazing. Probably one of my best, um, favorite photos on my phone. Anyways, it's gonna be an Archon drop opening here from Showtime, the two gate variant. So people have sort of figured out that if you go two gates, you can basically go with kind of two Archons at a similar timing. 
but you don't have to invest as much before kind of taking the third base. So it's a lower investment, double arc on drop DT play sort of thing here. As we set up into this and look to see how things are going to go as we see. As we see, how many times am I going to say a C today? I say that a lot, don't I? Very good at uh, saying things I've already said and catching on to things I should say less. Anyways, Dark Shine about to finish. Two more gates will start, but again, much later than what they're used to. Is, oh, I see what this is. It's the double arc on drop. And I mean, like, double, double arc on drop, if that makes sense. You know, with uh, two warp prisms, four archons. We've been seeing this a lot lately, actually. Uh, I, I first saw it done by Hero in SSL? Well, I don't think it was SSL. VSL? Not even VSL, maybe. I don't know when I saw it, but yes, he was the like, first guy I saw doing this sort of stuff, and it's become super popular lately, as we're going to be seeing the two prisms, to gen in uh, two prisms together. We will we'll be able to start doing quite a lot of... Uh, well, a lot of harassment. Let's see how Showtime's multitasking is. Let's see how Pandu Bemi's multitasking is. Right away here, Ling's and Roach is just on the way, but Showtime already taking a work a lead. And it's just so impressive how he just gets ahead from seemingly almost nothing as two more DTs warping over here. This first prism actually quite low on health. And as we do see the uh, first Archon will finish morphing. We'll actually wait until he morphs in the second Archon just so he has something to push Ling's etc. back in case they come in and surround while the both Archons are morphing and get some free damage. That Showtime just can't stop. Now we see two DTs approaching the third base. As we're going to see, the Archons will probably get ready to jump in towards the main. Spore position somewhat nicely, but I mean, the main base on the New Cook Precinct is very exposed, and so that's what we're seeing being abused right now. And we do have drones being picked off, five, six, and at the same time, DTs getting lifted up by Showtime as they pull away from the third base. Great damage so far. And Showtime now lifting up seven drones killed. What does Panda Bear me do against this? He's making a few extra drones, trying to catch back up. Making a few more roaches as well. Good into that Bane Nest, looking to play the Ling Bane Ravager playstyle in the middle. As we are going to be seeing how this goes. A few more drones on the way up. The plus one on the way from this forge now from Showtime. We do see a uh, entry just coming forwards and starting to nibble away at this Overlord. Obviously the one deficit here from Showtime is the fact that his third base is going to come down so late with this build. But again, you can get so much more done with it because you have the double prism. So much harassment potential. And that's exactly what Showtime's heading towards right now. He sees the fourth base too. He can turn back and work on that later on, I imagine. But now he probably wants to dive into the natural and again keep pulling Panda Bear me apart, keep pulling him in all sort of different ways. I'm just trying to do the most he can with these Archons and the Prisms, which he's invested into so early here. Four more workers killed. We see an Archons. Look over to the right hand side. Also about to get a queen kill. They just picked off the creep team at two. Does he get the queen? Not quite. The star worker's way through a couple links at the front. Oh, Showtime just picks it up in time still. And he's still in the natural expansion. Doing some good damage as well. Another queen going down. And Panda Bear Me, you can see his supply just keeps on dropping. Showtime just has way too much here. And again, the micro is just so good. He isn't losing anything at any point of this. Absolutely crazy. As he's now going to start working his way for the fourth base. But again, something that Panda Bear Me has to think about. Because he can't just say, Ah, oh, yeah, it's fine if you start killing my fourth base. <laughs> It is a big deal if he loses the 4th base and takes too much damage on it. And there's Archons lifting up to the main, and I'm still over here again, just looking to see what they can do. So I'm fighting those Roaches finally! Panda Bear Me picks up an Archon kill. Now at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if Showtime just feels as though he's got enough to warp in another 2 DTs and morph another Archon to keep harassing here, because it's been so powerful for him so far. He really could keep on committing to this. Another 2 gates will get ready to come down towards the front as... I mean, Showtime behind all of this has obviously just been building up this super scary army, and well, Panda Bear, I mean, he's still just on very much so Ling Roach. It's not even Ravages, it's not even Banelings, it's Ling Roach, and that's where the majority of his problem will come from, as this push starts to come across the map. Warpism, well, both Warpisms will drop their Archons. Will be an important part of this push as well. A lot of splash damage in from those. As here we go, are we moving forwards? We see Showtime split up into a bit of a bear. Can't give himself Prism here. We're actually going to see a recall back home. Showtime obviously not too comfortable fighting against that number of roaches. Another warping of zealots. Maybe just wants to wait until the plus where uh, sorry, the charge upgrade is gonna finish here. The charge upgrade could uh really kinda change things actually, you know, with a charge upgrade, you just have those zealots actually taking part in the fight more so than just dying before they even reach their target. So that could change things quite drastically as we see a few more zealots warping in down towards the third base and another cross of battle two dropping down, units just dodging out of the way and Again, Banes, Lings, Roaches, Ravagers coming in from top side, getting ready to come in from the left as well, and here we go, pushing forwards. And we've seen these units do come very quickly to start fighting though, and they're starting to clean up quite a bit as we see Ravagers as well. 
being pushed away over to the left hand side. Here we see units moving through the center of the map, Panda Me pushing all the way back to the left as Showtime sets up a temple archives. This is Showtime through and through, you know, making sure he's showing off a bit of his skill, but again, solid, defensive, not overextending, always just looking to defend, defend, defend until he's sure he's got a late game lead to attack with, and that's exactly what he's uh, going for at the moment. High Templar warping on in, and again we do see a couple of Zerglings up to the top side. Panda Bear Me looking to see what else is going on. Roach is up to the top left as well. Temple Archives researching that storm upgrade. Another immortal coming through as well. I thought you were clapping for something. Yeah, I, thought, I, thought, I, thought, I thought something really exciting was happening. I thought we were gonna like. I thought it was like. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, I have no idea. <laughs> I just thought. I just, I just thought there was just massive of stuff going on that I was missing. I don't know. Now I'm all excited, now I want to clap, woo, so clap. Um, Showtime still just massing up an army in the center here, and I mean, he's, again, he's got a lot of Zealots, Archons, Immortals, Stalkers, still a few High Templar in the back. I mean, he's about to hit Storm as well, I mean, if Showtime's army isn't ready to fight shortly, I don't know when it ever will be. And as we see from Panda Bear Me, well, he's going into the Hive, he's going into the Spire, and one thing that Panda Bear Me will definitely want to aim towards is making sure that he can well, what Showtime wants to aim towards is to shut down Panda Bear Me before the Hive. Once that tech comes into play, it's much harder to fight. So hitting the timing right now would be pretty powerful. High Templar are a little bit trailing behind, and maybe Panda Bear Me takes advantage of that. Already grabbing an Archon to the top side, Showtime will rotate around and start fighting against this, and Panda Bear Me just pulls back. Buying time so far. We have a couple more High Templar morphing in the back once again. Link Bane Ravager. We're gonna see what might happen on Archon taking a little charge. A few more gates as well. I mean, Showtime really, again, is so close to being able to keep on pushing forwards. And again, I guess the Hive about to finish, but how long until Hive Tech units really come to play? Well, you either have to build an Ultra Cavern or a Great Aspire. I mean, Vipers can come in immediately, but are they gonna change a lot on this fight? Probably not too much. Not as much as Tier 3 Tech would. As we're gonna be seeing, well, here we go. Storms on either side as the Banes are being denied. And whoa, a lot more Banes from the North. That comes out of nowhere. And Showtime. Actually starts to lose quite a lot here to those uh, extra banes from the north. I don't think you realize how many more banes are going to come in from that direction all of a sudden. Mostly road, uh, immortals left over. Some zealots will charge forwards now. Also mostly roaches from Panda Bear Me. And Showtime, despite losing quite a lot, still feels as though he's got enough to keep on pushing forward. Some more zealots streaming forwards. At the same time, you have zealots in the main and natural doing damage as well. And Showtime picking Panda Bear Me apart. There's a warp prism overhead. And it's a large warp in now to commit to this army. Two more archons morphing. And that should be just about game once again. And Showtime is going to go up 2 0 in this best of five. And again, Showtime looking very good so far today in this PVZ. And the Zealot Stalkers, Immortals, and Archons still just setting up into this. We see another few Zealots in the natural expansion. They try and target the Greatest Spy, which is Morphing, but doesn't quite find the opportunity. Showtime quite happy picking off this base. This base, too, would be a great target for him. And he sees the Greatest Spy not finished, so he knows he has a bit of time. Panda Bear Me really will struggle to keep on fighting here. Banes will roll forwards. The Zealots charge into them a little bit. Not the best of situations. And actually, now mostly Immortals against Lings. Panda Bear Me is starting to clean up, but still just doesn't have enough. And another warping in the main will force him to type. Trying to load a bit rid of it so <laughs> it looks even more pixely. But maybe a bit more stable and a bit more consecutive as we kick off to the top left hand side. It's going to be our Green Zay player from OSC Root. It's Panda Bear Me. And he's up against the blue Protoss bottom right hand side. It is showtime. I was really looking forward to the break because I really wanted a bit of. Uh, I really wanted a prawn cracker, man. Right what? Write a formal complaint. Could do. Now I'm eating really cold chicken wings. They're good though. They were really good. I don't like the wet food, that's better. The wet food? Okay. So next time I order from Star Chef, I should get the wet food. Maybe I should write, leave a note for the restaurant and say we only want it if it's wet. Wet food. <laughs> Is that not just food with sauce in it? <laughs> I don't think... Has anyone ever described 
Food from the Chinese is wet. What about soup? <laughs> soup, you ain't well... Soup's definitely wet. No shit, soup is wet. It's a yeah, fucking it's liquid. Salty, you would describe soup as being salty. Yeah. Okay, but I mean, but what does that have anything to do with what we ate tonight? Well, you should get the wet food. <laughs> so we should get soup. Yeah. Why don't you just say we should get soup? Yeah. Oh my god. Oh. But I mean, this crispy food has sauce in it too. Yeah. So what you're saying is don't get it's crispy not wet. meat. It's not wet. It's not, but it is wet because it's in the sauce. This is such a dumb discussion. <laughs> this is like really dumb discussion. All right, guys. Um, well, that's a good way to waste the first three minutes of the PVZ. Gets us past some of the boring stages of the matchup as we do see the Stargate coming down in the back of the mineral line from Showtime, setting up in towards a couple of gates at the front too. So first time we've seen Showtime play a Stargate, which is nice. Something different, something fresh. I think it's always good to change up your build orders in the matchup and keep things different. So far he has done. Third game and third time in a row it's going to be something different. Game 1, the Resonating Glaives. Game 2, the Double Archon drop. Game 3, now the Stargate. Just keeping things very fresh here, keeping his opponent guessing. And the Abyssal Reef, the first time you're on a map here in this series, which really allows Showtime to very ably kind of commit to um, a bit more of a Sky Toss focused army, but again. Twilight comes down very soon after the Stargate, and so we're not going to be seeing Sky... I'm keep saying Sky Toss, and you guys watching this are probably like, well, no one's actually playing Sky Toss. <laughs> and, and, you know, we saw in the first game of the day, Hurricane playing Sky Toss, and since then we've seen none at all, so... Been a little bit interesting as we set up into this game. Number three, remember, Showtime on match point. If he wins it, he goes into the round of eight. Plays against the winner of DNS True, which is the next matchup on the stream. That's coming through after this series, of course. Voidray on the way up from Showtime. Again, just a little bit of a safety thing. Oracle into Voidray. The Voidray is a great safety feature. Also can work his way through overlords around the map as well. As we see, Leon and Roachmore on the way up as well. It's a pretty fast plus one melee upgrade, actually, out of Pound by me. Feelings on the way for him. We'll see if he maybe can try and deny a third base as well, coming across the map here right now. He just has to defend against these adepts, which should be hard with plus one melee and Lings on the way. He should be fine. Milking the chat. Chicken in England makes me think of Nando's. I need more Nando's in my life. Nando's is pretty good. Nando's is alright. It's decent. Nando's is really good. It's, it's, I, I'll never forget when we did Gfinity events, and at these Gfinity events, it was so crazy, man. They just gave you vouchers for food. Like, they didn't provide catering or anything, but they gave you vouchers that you could use in, like, the nearby mall. Or, well, the event was in a mall. It was in the cinema of a mall, basically. And it was really weird because it was like, ah. Oh, well, here's some vouchers you can use in this mall, and basically they had Nando's, and so everyone just went to Nando's like four times a day. <laughs> All these pro players, I remember at one point some players were like, didn't actually want to play in the tournament that much, but actually to kind of come and get free Nando's is completely, <laughs> completely worth it. And it's kind of funny how much Nando's we, uh, we ate. I'm pretty sure we kind of pushed for Nando's sponsorship at some point with how much Nando's we were eating as a, uh, as a collection of people. And it's pretty crazy. No, we didn't get it down to the sponsorship maps. It's it's sad, I know, but uh, well, it's just sad. I mean, not not really anything else to say about it, is it? Should have gone down to the sponsorship. When are the semi-finals of this event? The rest of this tournament after the round of eight will be played on Monday, guys. So if you're looking for the rest of the tournament, Monday is the day to tune in. We'll be live with that, and we'll be back on normal internet and quality options and all the rest of it. So it should be a lot better for you guys. Again, there's just a little bit of an update trying to provide some stream rather than no stream at all. As we do see the small crawler here uh, trying to help out as we see a depth into the natural too. Oh my god, Showtime is just all over the place already. He's got a depth over running the third base. He's going to kill the queen and the spore over here. His adepts are still in the natural picking off drones as well. And now he's going to start joining them all up in one same location. So this is going to be a little bit of a... Uh, I mean, this is almost just game over in some ways for Panda Bear Me. Because does he have enough links to get his way through these adepts? But he has got roaches on the way up. So, I mean, does he have enough roaches? A Void Ray over here could actually come in and do some damage on the third base now that he's been cleaning it out. 47 drones currently in the main base mineral line. That is not really a great sign. That's not exactly optimal saturation. As a few more drones will start to drop as they try to back away. Adepts move further towards the mineral line as well. 26, 28 workers down and... Man, Bermis is just going to type on now. GG, showtime for the 3 0.